Hi everyone, welcome to Making It Real. I'm really excited today. I'm sitting here with Nicole DiNardo. And, and she's a very special guest, not only because she's amazing, but because she is a Meal Garden user herself. Um, she's been using Meal Garden for, it's got to be years now. And in, in launching this Making It Real series, while we're going to be interviewing experts from various fields, um, and you know, some of them may not be familiar with Meal Garden, I really wanted to start us off by presenting someone who was not only super successful in um, really making a name for themselves in the wellness space and really scaling their business to something that is sustainable um, and profitable, uh, but also prove that, you know, Meal Garden is, uh, can play a factor in that. And uh, hopefully we'll hear a little bit more about that with Nicole. So Nicole, before we uh, jump into our interview, um, I will tell folks a little bit more about you. Um, so Nicole is a certified nutritional practitioner as well as an iridologist. Um, she has experience working in natural health clinics both in Toronto as well as in England. I remember when you first joined Meal Garden, I believe you were still in Toronto, and then you ended up moving to England, but then you were still a Meal Garden user. Um, mm -hmm. She's an honors graduate of the Institute of Holistic Nutrition here in Toronto, as well as a member of the Canadian Association of Natural Nutritional Practitioners. Try saying that 10 times fast. Um, <laughs> and so Nicole has so many, um, so many different skills. Um, at, at the core, she's founder of Nicole Nutrition. She counsels clients on a wide range of digestive disorders and anxiety disorders. Um, she also specializes in therapeutic uh, cooking. Um, I know she does a lot of awesome cooking classes around the city that I often see popping up. Um, so really today we're going to talk about you know, how Nicole did it, a little bit more about her story. And I hope to touch on um, some elements of how and what Nicole used so that she could scale um, her business and could make it uh, a sustainable full-time practice. So without further ado, thank you, Nicole, for being on the show. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. I'm always happy to um, share my experience with Meal Garden because I absolutely love the platform. I'm not trying to sell it at all. It's, it's just an integral part of my, my business. So happy to share that with anyone who's looking for something that can help them. Thank you. And would you mind maybe starting um, with a little bit about your journey? I know that a lot of people watching this right now, they, they may be new grads or, or perhaps they've just sort of made the decision of, okay, I want to do this wellness practitioner thing and I, I want to make it I want to make it work on a sustainable um, level. Can you talk about where you were, however long ago it was, what you were feeling, sort of what your journey started to look like at that time? Absolutely, yeah. So when I took um, IHN, I did the um, a full time program. So it was very intense, and I was a really big keener. Like I got really into the program, and I went above and beyond. I've never been such a scholarly student before, but I was just really into it. And so by the end of graduating IHN, I was writing like 10 page protocols because I was so into the amount of information that I had learned and I just really wanted to, to push that information to my clients as much as I could. And my first client received a 10 page protocol and it was intense. Like, you know, they, it wasn't easy to have a lot of follow-ups after that. Not only are you giving everything away at first, but it's not bite-sized information. And all of these habits, um, they really take time, right? Mm -hmm. So it's important to remember that we need to work with our clients step-by-step -step and kind of outline things for them uh, down the road. We may be too excited to get things going and change everything. Um, but that's my first bit of advice is just really start slow, start from the beginning, uh, and start cleaning up the diet as much as you possibly can with bite-sized um, changes as you go. Mm -hmm. uh, so finishing IHN, uh, of course, I was gung-ho and, and, and nervous and spending nearly half a day or more just working on one protocol. So I got burned out quite a bit at first. Um, but I was using Meal Garden because I did my co-op with, um, with Meal Garden. Yeah. That was one of, I did my co-op with Meal Garden as well as um, with perfect herbs the um 
the herbal clinic and dispensary on Ross as well. So I kind of divide my time between that. Uh, so I was able to make tinctures and learn more about herbal medicine, which really interests me, as well as learning how to meal plan. Mm -hmm. So coming from a culinary background, um, I, I realized that my, what was going to make me different was just being food first. So supplements and herbal medicine would be part of it, but I wanted really to push the, the change in the kitchen because for me, um, that is what changed my health. And so I really believe that the food has to be delicious in order to be a sustainable change. So incorporating my culinary background with a usable template like Meal Garden, because you can tell people to eat this and that. Most people know it's not really an information gap. It's, it's a mindset gap. Yeah. So how are we going to give them all the tools that they need? Okay, this is what I'm going to do. These are the foods Nicole recommends. These are the recipes. Yeah. Right? So a lot of naturopaths and nutritionists will just say, oh, just eat, eat this, this, and that. And just without guidelines or actual application, it can be a little bit difficult. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to something. Yeah, and it's interesting how you how you mentioned that you know right away you came across possibly some challenges. You were doing things what you thought was right, and then you were realizing, okay, this isn't necessarily efficient. How did you navigate that process of sort of? It sounds like time management must have been you know that one thing that that became a little bit of an issue or you know how was it that you were monetizing your time did you were there any first initial steps in terms of okay like i need a strategy around how i'm actually going to make this work in terms of it being a profitable like reasonable business absolutely i sat down with the clients that i was seeing the amount of work i was putting into each one and what my return was and it wasn't adding up for me. And so even if I wanted to scale at that business model, there, there'd be no way to really hit the heights that I wanted to with this amount of work I was putting into. And the other thing is that if it wasn't working for me, it also wasn't working for my clients. So um, feedback has been really important in my growth. Um, I'll call certain clients and just have an informational inf interview and be like, how are you feeling with what we're doing right now? And what have been some obstacles and what hasn't really worked for you? And so consistently doing that has allowed me to tweak how I deliver my information. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. And because I hear a lot from people, especially in the nutrition one-on-one -on -one consulting world, world, that they're like, you know what, I don't know, I need to get out of this. I somehow need to figure out how to scale because it's just not, it's not working. I feel like I'm giving too much and it's just, as you say, the numbers just aren't adding up. Um, yeah. So what were some of the shifts in, you know, either how you changed consulting with people one-on-one -on -one, or did you kind of step back from that altogether and decide to, uh, you know, consult, consult in different pathways? What's really helped me is, has been follow-ups. Um, so auto, um, automation is really important. That's been helping with keeping appointments and things like that, but also sending an automation once a week to my clients. I'm saying like, how is this week going for you? Yeah. Um, just a way to keep in touch because you might have a, given them a, pro a program that's maybe two weeks long, but just checking in with them and providing that little bit of motivation. That's been really helpful. I've been using, um, things like a PDF filler. Mm -hmm. So really simplifying my protocols and I brought it down to a one page protocol. So not only that, does that simplify it for me, but it simplifies it for my clients. Here's what you need to know, your top three main goals. Here are my initial food recommendations, do's and don'ts. Mm -hmm. Here are the supplements and herbs you're on, when to take them. Mm -hmm. And I have a PDF filler for that, which I'm happy to show you. Um, and, and that's been really helpful for me as well. Perfect. And as you say, it's a win-win because if it's not working for the clients, um, it's not working for you and, and vice versa. Um, and it almost sounds like the way that you're describing it, it sounds like you're running your business like it's like there's a team. Do you have people, do you have employees that are working for you or, or have you just been able to hack all of these different tools and such? So it almost seems that way. <laughs> um, I'm working with a wonderful business consultant at the moment named Stev. Okay. Uh, and he's and he's been really great in helping me um, with my branding and kind of clarifying my message because it's all really about communication. And mm -hmm. again, like I mentioned, that it's not an information gap; it's a mindset gap. So how are we 
how am I going to provide that communication as clearly as possible? So that's part of my team. I work out of two clinics. I work out of a cardiology clinic with Dr. Nicoletta Bonafetti. Um, and so she provides me with some resources. Um, but the other one, the herbal clinic and dispensary has been really great. We're a team, we're a wellness practitioner team. So we have naturopaths, acupuncturists, um, registered massage, massage therapists. So for my toolkit, I strongly believe in utilizing, um, you know, mental health, acupuncture, movement, uh, and things like that, because, you know, I really do believe nutrition is just one piece of the pie. So yeah. in terms of my tools and, and my team, I consider them my team as well, often referring and sharing clients. So that's been really great. Um, and I've been also um, taking a, a cognitive behavior therapy class because especially working with anxiety and depression, it just has been that missing link that I feel that I need um, with the dietary change as well as the mindset change. Yeah. And um, you also do these, uh, these in-person workshops and events and that sort of thing. So your, your business is, is very diverse. How has um, in-person and sort of more events impacted your your business have you found that that strategy has been particularly helpful in terms of returns or do you see that more of like as just simply a marketing and a branding almost like investment um i know in person takes a bit more time and down the road i would like to scale my business to be completely online but at least that initial appointment um connecting with someone on another level especially in the beginning um, trust is really important being a, a consultant and so if you can show to them that you truly are listening and that you're there for them there's something energetically in a room that you cannot um, duplicate on zoom for instance so I, think <laughs> initial, I think that initial one is really important um, but I have to be honest like the one-on-one -on -one I really do love because we can get super super deep and, and really personalized in that sense when I do the one-on-one -on -one consultations um, and very rarely do I dole out um, uh, let's say a program or anything um, I've done it with a liver liver nourish reset which has been really great and, and that's been helpful kind of as a reset right a nourish reset but when we're getting into specifics I still would like to see uh, clients one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Oh, I love that. We were actually just having a conversation, me and the Meal Garden team, about how we're so on, uh, almost a little bit annoyed with everyone's obsession with this thing called passive income. And everyone just wants, you know, make money while you sleep. And, you know, yeah, just roll out these programs and then you're done. And right. I mean, yes, there's obviously an element that's like, okay, that's efficient. And, you know, if you can help more people, um, you know, quicker and more efficiently, that's awesome. But then at mm -hmm. the same time, there's still needs to be that touch point and to, uh, you know, to whatever degree. And that doesn't mean that you can't have, you know, a scalable, successful business that makes you, you know, a really nice high profit. Um, but you still need to, to have some element of you actually being there caring for your clients. That's what it sounds like for, for you. For me, for me, that's part of my business model. Um, and there's nothing wrong with having a, a part, portion of your business model being passive income, uh, as well as the great strength and community that you get from these programs. That's, I think that's key. Um, but the one-on-one -on -one is, is incredibly rewarding and incredibly productive, I find. Like, it, it works. Yeah. Now, speaking of productivity, I know that you've made some uh, sort of optimizations, um, integrations within, is it your website or, or sort of your onboarding um, system? I'd love to see a little bit more about that and hear a little sure. bit more about that. It also ties in with Meal Garden. Just cool. putting that there. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I just recently um, started to utilize the client element of Meal Garden, and I don't know what I've been doing for so long, um, because in the past, you know, I'll send someone a PDF of my, of my plan, and then on that PDF will be a link to their personalized online cookbook or meal plan. Uh, so I try to keep things as central as possible, but then I have additional information for them and things like that. So oftentimes it is hard copy, but if we're seeing each other uh, online, it would be PDF. And so there's all these elements. And I just also included full script, uh, mm -hmm. which is the online um, dispensary. And that's been incredible in terms of automation. So I'd really love that. But I have all these different, elements and how am I going to bring it all together so just recently I started utilizing clients and I'm happy to share my screen with you um, okay. to show you 
what we're doing. And so to bring it all together, I developed a little portal and working with my business consultant as well, um, we realized that having that sense of community and, you know, I do have a following, but my clients that are actually my paying clients, um, having something special for them that allows them to say, oh, I, this is members only. It's exclusive. Ooh, I love that. And I love that you were saying, you know, I've set up a portal. And so did you hire this huge, you know, web development team to some, and outsource that in India and all that jazz? Or did you do it yourself? <laughs> I have to be honest. Um, building my website has been 100% myself. I come from an arts background. I, I did um, art history and fine arts. And so cooking and nutrition and building my brand and business has really been an artistic expression for me also. So I really enjoy, I use Squarespace and that's been fun. So if you click here, these are my members only. So it's really essentially a link. It's a link to the client page. So all you would do is log in. Um, and so if you were a client, this is where you would um, put in your information. So here I'm, I'm impersonating someone named Adriana Muzadi, who's a wonderful client. Um, and so this is what she will see. So I've got my branding on Meal and this sends you right to Meal Garden, but it looks like it's my thing. Oh my God, you're so smart. This is perfect. I didn't, I, I didn't actually see this before the call, but guys, this is exciting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's just simply a link, but it looks like you're still within my branding. So here we have Adriana Muzzetti's personal information. Here are her reading materials. So I've given her her meal plan, and then I've provided her um, with both a meal plan, so something very specific and regimented, as well as a recipe collection. And uh, which one I choose depends on our intake. So I'll ask my client, what kind of person are you? Are you someone who loves to measure your rice? Yeah. And you really <laughs> like structure? And if I give you a shopping list, do you need to have you know, that whole week planned? Or are yeah. you super creative in the kitchen and do you just want some recommendations on foods to eat? And I'll give you a bunch of recipes that you can incorporate those foods. So yeah. it depends, and sometimes I give them both. So yeah. Adriana Muzzatti, we're working on some weight loss for her. Um, a lot of um, just improving digestion and a bit of ner um, nervous system support. So lots of healthy fats. Yeah. Um, and she really thrives on the paleo style. She loves um, fish and meat and things like that. So I've incorporated lots of protein for her, but she's also a midwife. So time is of the essence. Yeah. She needs to meal prep in order to make sure she's nourished throughout the day. So for her, we've got her meal plan here and I love the ability to utilize leftovers because yep. it's all about batch cooking. And so Meal Garden offers that uh, option here. You'll see leftovers, all right? So we're meal prepping in the beginning. We've got our chia seed. We've got a big, a big stew. We've got some cauliflower rice. Oh always dessert, God. literally That's always right. dessert. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. This is one of my favorites. I go to this one often. So this is a freezer oh fudge. God. I've seen this one before. This oh is I think every client gets this on their on oh, their plan. It would be uh, really and it's <laughs> <laughs> and it's also really um what's the word? Um, it's really flexible. You can throw in any nut butter in this. Play around with the oils that you have. Totally. Uh, any any seeds and things like that so that's fun uh so this is this is her weekly plan she's got her shopping list here she could scale up for her and her husband and then i've got her recipe collection here so if you ever just want a bit of inspiration just go through here and be like this is what i'm going to cook tonight and just some ideas perfect yeah and this really does speak to what we were saying around you know this is a way that you can scale your efforts, scale your time, sort of do one thing quickly, efficiently, but then you're still giving Adriana such a customizable kind of touch point where it feels like you're really holding her hand and where you've set up this entire system set just for her. So it's really no sacrifices. Yeah, and the reason why I developed this um, members only platform is because getting feedback from clients, they'd say, Nicole, I lost my link that you sent me. Um, I don't know how, where to find my recipes. So I really wanted a place where they can just go and have all the information in one place. Yeah. Um, so this is essentially a, a protocol I would have given her. Um, and she see she's responded. And so these are just the basics for her. Yeah. These are what we're working on. Here are your main goals. And that's another tip that I've recommended that I would recommend for new um, practitioners. 
providing reachable goals, attainable goals, uh, whether that's through the week or for however long your protocol is, is really helpful, um, yeah. especially for people who are essentially goal oriented. Yeah. Um, so you need to have fish twice a week. You're uh, drinking this much water, you know, based on her weight. So just having those checkpoints yeah. is really great. Totally. Oh my God. Well, I love that. Oh my goodness, Nicole, you are, talk about being so studious. You're an, you're also an honors graduate of Meal Garden. I just deemed you that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> uh, and also, yeah, I'm teaching as well. So I'm, um, I'm an instructor at IHM as well. Yes, I heard. And, and so how long have you been doing that now? Um, that has been since the beginning of last year. I'm teaching comparative diets as well as sim symptomatology one. Oh, wow. Love that. Oh my goodness. Well, um, you know, Nicole, I absolutely love following your content on Instagram, but I know that you also have a newsletter. I, I hear that you might be hosting a retreat later this year. So do you want to share um, your socials, how people can get in touch with you as well as just kind of stay in the loop with all that you're doing? 100%. So my website is NicoleNutrition.ca and on there you can, will be prompted for a newsletter uh, sign up. Uh, and so I send them roughly every two weeks um, where I'll share a recipe or maybe a study or something that I'm interested in to kind of push motivation and inspiration. And I do believe um, education is a really big part of, of, of making daily changes. So the more you know, the more uh, informed decisions you can make. So that's my newsletter. I'm also working um, on an anti-anxiety anti -anxiety weekend retreat for um, city dwellers. So it's gonna be pretty close to Toronto. We're, um, we're hoping to have it in Bolton. Uh, and it'll just be a, a three-day retreat that has to do with you know, food and cooking well and some food demonstrations, bit of yoga, meditation, nature therapy. It's focused mainly on reducing anxiety. And for me, nature is one of the biggest tools that we have. Um, so it's just kind of like a, a anti-anxiety reboot. Ah, oh, that sounds awesome. That sounds like something I may just see you there. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's going to be nice. Perfect. Um, well, again, Nicole, uh, congratulations on all of your success so far. Um, it's been amazing to watch and I'm just like so proud of you and so inspired by you and also just really appreciative of your time today and sharing all of that on our call and I'll chat with you soon and I'm sure lots of others that are watching now will also. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me Kiki and I feel the same about you and everything you're doing so. Thank you. <laughs> cool. Okay, thank you.